Wine and Crime contains graphic and explicit content that may not be suitable for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Wine and Crime, the podcast where three friends chug wine, chat true crime, and unleash their worst Minnesotan accents. Yeah. I'm Kenyon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm Kenyon. <coughs> <coughs> that choking in the corner is Amanda. Mm. I'm Amanda. <laughs> and I'm Lucy. Uh, Huzzah! I still have shingles, and Amanda, do you want to share with the group your current <laughs> ailment? I have bird flu. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> it was because it was because your soothing ocean sounds last time. Yes, I'm pretty sure that's precisely where I contracted bird flu. Well, they might be back for this episode because we're again on the oh high seas. Oh, Dude, that's right. No. I'm not ready to be on the open ocean. (laughs) This. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking Christ. This week, we will be discussing cruise ship disappearances. I don't know why I needed spooky sounds there, but it felt right. (laughs) Yeah, not like Bermuda Triangle shit. Like. No, no, no. People killing their loved ones on a cruise ship. Uh, but that's allegedly. Allegedly. Impossible allegedly. to prove, as we will find yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. Big time. So, Amanda, so. what wine pairs with this kind of bizarre topic? Slash what wine will I be using to wash down my Tamiflu? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this week's crime pairing is the delicious Vega... Sindoa Garnacha Rosé wow. out of Navarra, Spain. You and your yep. fucking Garnachas. <laughs> I know, it's so good. It's unbeatable, this grape. And technically, this is only my second Garnacha, so let's just relax. Out of but, seven. Uh, <laughs> I knew I wanted to go with a rosé this week, and this one was actually selected by the lovely Becca Lewis, who was so kind to me this week while I had fucking bird flu. Oh, yeah. I thought you were going to um, say Matt from Total Wine Blue. I did, Minnesota. too. <laughs> no, I wish. Oh, my God. Still got mad love for you, Matt, but I didn't go to you this week. Um, I know we talked about this grape in the arson episode, so I'm not going to go over all of that again. But let's uh, talk about it for a minute in the context of a rosé. Mm. So be- this grape works really well for rosé because um, it produces a low tannin, low acidity and fruity wine without being too sweet. It's going to have more of a dry finish. Um, it's going to bring out flavors of spice, red fruit, combined with a nice full body on this uh, rosé. It is lively and dynamic on the palate, and that's always nice to pair mm. with food of all varieties. Rosés are particularly good with, like, fatty fish. Mm. So good with seafood, if you see where I'm going here. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. So when you're stranded at sea and you need to, like, skewer a... A narwhal a fatty fish. Know, to survive. <laughs> this is going to be the wine that I'm hoping you clutched as you fell 30 stories to the ocean. Or you already had it in full in your wine bra, which we're looking into getting. Oh my um, God. If we could get branded <laughs> wine bras, you guys. We need those. Oh but my God. We need to do, do it. Would, your, would the appearance of your boobs get smaller the more you drank? Yes. Precisely. Okay. I believe so. Hmm. I don't really care. It's just such a great, useful tool. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> back to rosé. Um, so the way that rosé is made is kind of interesting. This one's obviously made with the grape varietal Grenache, and the color of the wine comes from the color and the skins of the grapes. So Grenache skins are super thin, and they contain low levels of tannins, so the pigments tend to be a little bit on the lighter side. Mm. And in order to maximize the color of grapes, they're pressed aggressively and fermented with the Mm. stems to extract the most color and phenols from the skins to balance with the rich and red flavors. 
And then, as opposed to red wines, so how rosé is made, um, the red wine grapes are the primary, you know, product. You're there, it's not, like, a mix of red wine and white wine grapes. Yeah. They still use red grapes. But they um, limit the skin contact. So they'll take the skins off or not allow them to remain in too much contact with the juice for a long period of time. Um, so they'll leave it for like maybe three days, whereas with red wine, you'd leave uh, the skins in contact with the juice much longer to get richer, more robust colors, which I actually didn't know. No, I didn't. I knew it wasn't a mix of red and white right. grapes, but I didn't know that about the skins. Also, yep. I want to so, be pressed aggressively. That sounds oh, fun. fun. <laughs> and so, yeah, then the wine's the wine is pressed, the skins are discarded rather than left in contact throughout the fermentation process. So with red wine, that skin stays in contact throughout the entire fermentation process and then is like whisked away at the at the end. Mm. Which is pretty cool. So is that how pretty all cool. roses are made? I believe so. Okay. That's Can you can it you makes make the most like sense. a good sangria out of rosé? Oh, yeah. I mean, you can. You can do rosé or white wine sangria. Mm -hmm. I prefer red myself, the traditional, because it's a little less sweet. Mm. But if you find a rosé that's super dry, Mm. then you're going to be looking at some good shit. Mm -hmm. Mm. For some reason... We need to experiment with wine cocktails. And aggressive pressing, because now I'm into that (laughs) And aggressive pressing. (laughs) Right? It's probably a fetish, aggressive pressing. It probably is. Oh, my God. This is a really hard cork. This is... Oh my god, the bird flu has weakened me. <laughs> Here we go. It's between my legs. Oh my god. I might what, have what are been. these noises? Sounds Don't get a hernia. Open. You don't need a hernia need on top of bird of flu. I feel like I have a fucking hernia. Okay, this is the last time I do this with you, Cork. <laughs> and somebody... I got some, it! Somebody on Twitter was like, is the pop a sound effect? No. no. It's no. very much not. <laughs> it's so go. real. It's, Popped it! Okay. All right. Oh, and we're well, off. An hour races. later, we're ready to record. <laughs> Oh, my God. While Amanda is struggling over there to fill her glass, Lucy, do you want to give us some background and psychology into cruise ship disappearances? I do. Not much psychology. I'm making the ghost sound every time. (laughs) No neurology for this episode. No neurology. More legality and loopholes. Yes. I love it. All right. So the main takeaway is that you should never go on a cruise ship for any fucking reason because they're horrifying and they're terrible. They're death ships. Okay. Episode over. Have a nice day. Bye. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Even if you survive, there's a chance that all the toilets will stop working and you'll be stuck out on the open seas for a week. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. So cruise ships are horrifying. Um, There Mm. are several associations uh, that try to track the number of cruise ship disappearances, and it's yep. impossible to get an accurate number because there are mm-hmm. it happens so frequently. Oh my so, god! Um, yeah, it's scurry. A solid number I kept finding was 165 people have gone missing at sea from a cruise ship between 1995 and 2011, and that's mm-hmm, kind okay. of where the hard stats ended. But I did find mm-hmm. that. There were 23 people in 2012 and 20 people in 2015. So it's mm-hmm. estimated about 250 people in the last 20 years have just oh gone fucking missing. That's so weird. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. I understand in the grand scheme of things with how many millions of people go on cruises. Yeah. That it's a low number, but... I don't know. That still skeeves me out royally. Yeah. Royal caribbean uh, Royal <laughs> Royal Caribbean, which pulled in in second place of the most cruise ship disappearances. Oh, congratulations, yeah. my, Royal my, Caribbean. <laughs> Hats off. My, wow. my story is a Royal Caribbean one. I think mine is too. Well, car- <laughs> Carnival cruise ships are the king oh, okay. of cruise ship disappearances. Woo! Number one. They also recently failed a CDC inspection. 
which stop. is stop. Carnival did. Yeah, they don't have like sneeze guards on their salad bar. Everything is buffet style. Like the restaurants are Listen, disgusting. If a supporter wants to pay for the three of us to go on a cruise to do some research, I'm no. not going to say. I no. would never. Say I no. would. I would say Just no. Just saying. I would well, say no. I'll I would bring like someone else. A fundable then. ticket. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you cannot Lucy get me and on I a will cruise. go. Mm-mm. No. <laughs> yeah. To quote my mother. No. 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 I'm trying to find the. Po- I have a. I have an excerpt from like the actual language from the Carnival. Cru- well, actually, it used to be the Carnival Cruise uh, ticket contract. Mm-hmm. They must have changed their language because I went on the Carnival Cruise website and looked at their contract lingo, and then this oh is God. not in it anymore. But it used to say, Carnival Cruise makes absolutely no guarantee for safe passage, a seaworthy <laughs> vessel, adequate, adequate and wholesome food, and sanitary and safe living conditions. So, so it you, makes no guarantee of any of those things. Correct. Yeah. Is what it's yeah. saying. If you <laughs> enter aboard this vessel, which may or may not be seaworthy, we cannot guarantee uh, fucking shit. So apparently that is incredible. The somebody brought this really unsettling part of their <laughs> ticket contract to light and their lawyers changed it because that's not the same wording anymore, but it's still like right. we're not fucking responsible for literally anything. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. God damn it. Uh, reassuring. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, th- there are several associations that track these missing people and try to provide support to families of these missing people because, legally speaking, a cruise ship is foreign soil and there is mm-hmm. no uh, set, there are no set rules on which, like, investigative entity is supposed yep. to take charge of missing people. Maritime law, motherfuckers! Oh, right. Fuck. Fuck. Party people! <laughs> oh Party. The Let's flu. get our maritime The Tamiflu is already kicking in. <laughs> I came into this in a bad way. <laughs> so Should have gotten a box of worse. wine. <laughs> it's only going to get worse. Can't wait. Glug, glug. Uh, so yeah, there are no set laws regarding how it's investigated, who investigated, investigates it, the court systems, trial locations, none of that. So it could be yeah. reasonably attributed to the Coast Guard, but which Coast Guard? The government right. of the nearest port, but where? Who? Sure. We don't even know where they fell off the fucking boat. Uh, the country of the victim's origin, um, which leads me to an example. So Mm. this is an example of the jurisdictional cracks we're dealing with. Okay. 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 A South African man rapes a South African woman on a cruise ship registered in Panama, which, by the way, most cruise ships are registered in either Panama or Liberia because to avoid... Most, like, shipping ships. Almost all ships are registered there, yeah. Yeah, but it's because that there's basically no oversight, no rules about labor costs, no okay, no regulation. There's really no anything. regulations, and there's no, and there it's super cheap. Mm. Okay, okay. So a South African man rapes a South African woman on a cruise ship registered in Panama by an Italian cruise line, but because the ship is operated by an Italian cruise line and is flagged in Panama, technically only the country of Panama can prosecute crimes, even though it's against a South African woman. By a South African man, which uh-huh. may or may not have occurred in the territorial waters of South Africa. Right. So only Panama. Could have occurred. Right. So only Panama could prosecute, and they fucking won't. So. Holy shit. Yeah. So yeah. there's nothing that people rapes and assaults and stuff like this happen all the time, and the victims yep. are open about it and they try to report it, and there's nothing they can do. Right. Mm. For sure. Which is horrifying. What about um, like? Background checking of employees and staff. I mean, that's regulated more by the company it's themselves, and I, I know at least there's, like, some of that that's happening mm. because I've even had actor friends who have auditioned to, like, do shows for extended periods of time on a cruise ship, mm. and they all of that regular regulatory, like, background checking for any job happens to them, too. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I don't... I'm assuming that would apply to anyone working on a cruise ship, but mm-hmm. I don't know. It just depends okay. on the company. That. That's that's up to yeah. the company. And if it's cheap, mm-hmm. 
And if it's, you know, it's cheap labor and there are no rules against hiring someone, they probably don't care. Mm -hmm. There are so many staff on a cruise ship. Yeah. Right. Or they probably care more about, like, in restaurant terms, front of house staff that have direct contact with guests Mm -hmm. being checked on, but not necessarily so much back of house or, like, crew. A couple of the cases... They're never going to be seen by anyone. They don't fucking care. A couple of the cases of assault and rape were by, like, janitors... Or yeah. the be- yeah the behind the scenes people, yeah. Damn. Um. So cruise but. ship companies are very quick to label deaths or disappearances as suicides, so that they don't need to feel any responsibility to do any further investigations. Sure. I w- I'm glad you mentioned this because I wanted to unpack this a bit. Who the fuck commits suicide on a cruise? That uh, is not a thing. I know. Well. I mean, I mean, uh, but one of the reasons is because there's so much alcohol flowing. I mean, one yeah. of the reasons to this claim, people are okay. getting drunk all the time. Again, there are no regulations about over serving. No one's going to be punished. How could you prove it, etc. Yeah, no yeah. one's going to be driving, so right. let it flow. Uh, exactly. And I don't think it's completely outside of the realm of possibility if you've been experiencing depression for a period of time. And you wanted to maybe, like, go on a trip to try and lift your spirits, and it's not, it doesn't go the way you expect. Right, that shit comes up and then, at any moment. Like, people right. commit yeah. suicide in the middle of, like, a party because it right. just strikes. You never you know. know. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's kind of, it's a bizarre way to book a cruise. Like, I don't think people necessarily book a cruise with the intention to commit suicide at seas. I think it's more of mm. a... In it happens moment. to happen. Yes, exactly. Okay. I mean, okay. look at Rose Dawson or Rose, whatever her other last name yeah, was. She, she almost jumped. Jump. Are we talking about Titanic? Titanic. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Rose of Jack and Rose. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't remember her original last name. Who cares? Zane. I'm flying. Rose Zane. I'm the king of the world. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I love that movie. Oh my god, it's so good. Okay, so their uh, cruise lines also do a lot of covering up evidence of not mm-hmm. handing over any sort of surveillance video that could exist, but likely yep. doesn't because also their surveillance and camera systems are super shoddy. Mm-hmm. So they're they, as good as the um, one in my backyard. Exactly. Yeah. It's not, not plugged real. in. Yeah. <laughs> but seriously, to interject for one moment here, because, like, this shit was so cray. So did you see in the notes what I put up about Jason Rappy or whatever his name is? No, I didn't read your notes. I want to be surprised. Oh, you put okay, them in my so, section. I Yeah, I put it. them in your section. <laughs> so this guy goes overboard on the ship. He He's uh, presumed dead They because there's, like, video footage of him going overboard, but no one, it was, like, in the middle of the night, he was drunk. It didn't look like he committed suicide, but was... It was like a drunk accident. Mm. But um, even though there was video footage or whatever, it didn't look like a crime had been committed. So, again, back to this weird legality, like, nobody got the FBI involved in the investigation. Mm -hmm. And if the FBI doesn't take over, then they don't have to report that death in that, like, giant list. Yeah, that's why uh, these numbers are not solid. Because a lot of these... Yeah, so those numbers could be two to three times higher... Yep. Than they actually Fuck. are, because if they don't include the FBI, they're not reported to that roster. Right. Well, the FBI and they has have a no roster, legal... but a lot of these yeah. other associations and groups uh, for, like, victims of cruise ship disappearances, they keep their mm-hmm. own records. But again, yep. that's why all these numbers are a little bit different and nothing solid. For sure. Fucking um, Christ. So there is a lot of proof uh, that was kind of brought to light in various court cases that cruise lines dispose of or cover up evidence. They don't report disappearances to the police or the FBI or even the families. The families are just like, hey, where's my loved one? Yeah. Um, Yeah. They they lie to family members. They attack the victim's characters to try to present Mm -hmm. them in a light where, oh, she probably did commit suicide or she was um, a dangerous slut or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Ugh. Um, so this kind of ties back to what one of the maritime lawyers' websites that I went to, because it's an entire mm-hmm. industry. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, they attribute the 
this covering up and the lying to the three R's, which are reputation, revenue, and responsibility. So uh, if a cruise, like Carnival Cruise is never going to say, hey, 17 people went missing in the last six months because they have all these fancy commercials and they're making so much money. People pay so much money for a cruise ticket. If people really knew how often people just fucking vanish, then they wouldn't be going on a cruise. No. They would never sell tickets. Mm -hmm. No. Also, I just want to interject. Someone that I know has a a friend who I don't know. um, And that friend is getting married on a cruise ship. No. Don't do it. No. And then expects her entire bridal party and both families to go with them on a seven-day cruise. But to pay for it. Like, the guests pay for it themselves. No thanks. So they're getting married yeah. on a cruise ship and then going on another cruise? I'm not going to pay to, like, disappear to my death <laughs> no. or to the, to the upside down or wherever the fuck these people go. The upside down. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Sorry about it. Enjoy your fucking nuptials. One of you ain't coming home. Yeah. Yeah. It's I'd, not ra- I'd be rather me. attend a wedding on the beach in Cancun at an all-inclusive resort. Yeah. And then wave, on dry land. wave, right. wave vigorously as they cruise away, <laughs> yeah. never to return. Isn't that isn't that like the craziest plan you've ever heard of? I mean, I don't know. It's kind of nice because then you don't have to get them a gift because a they're already asking too much of you, and b they're probably going to disappear anyway. So they wouldn't <laughs> use the china you got them. It probably yeah, so really really you could get them a gift, and then you just get to keep it when they disappear. Yes. Yep. Roll smart. Ooh. Yep. I know. <laughs> I'm just going to interject that, that throughout this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Subtle foghorn sounds. <laughs> Love it. But it might also be a way to weed out people who don't really, really, really want to be at your wedding. No, that's 100% or who don't what have a destination like wedding five is. Grand to yeah. pay. Yeah, whatever. It's craziness. You invite everyone and you know that three people are going to come and you're like, tight, this is the only three I wanted anyway. Yeah. And then you just have a way better wedding. Yeah, yeah, that's actually true. Maybe they're geniuses. I get that. That was a little Maybe. bit my strategy, but everyone fucking showed up anyway. So Didn't thanks a work. lot. Your Didn't destination wedding in work. Iowa. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the destination was the middle of nowhere in a field in Iowa. A beautiful place. It was a gorgeous. Field. 110 degrees that day. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. My Can mother's you? face nearly melted clear off. <laughs> I'm so glad I got the airbrush Still makeup. Still a beautiful no woman idea. regardless. <laughs> okay, okay, back on track, back on Never. track. Okay. Never. Okay. So there's a, there's a guy named Dr. Ross Klein who wrote a book called Cruise Ship Blues, The Underside of the Cruise Ship Industry. No. <laughs> Which I really want to read. He's also testified uh, before is Congress. It, is it is it even keeled? <coughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> that was so bad. I know, but I learned oh, about Oh, you hurt my chest. <laughs> <laughs> my bird flu. My bird flu. Ouch, my bird flu. <laughs> Ow. Amazing. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, he's also testified before Congress multiple times because this is like an epidemic that everyone should be concerned about. Mm-hmm. Um. Actually, on that note, brief interlude, they did pass some legislation called the cruise ship, what's it called? The Cruise Vessel Safety and Security Act, which, Mm -hmm. upon investigation, really doesn't do a whole lot. Jack shit. Oh, shocking. Um, so one of, some of the things that it did do was mandate peepholes in, in every, like, room, um... Like a hotel has, or... Right. And similar okay. to a hotel, you have your key card, but you have to use that key card to get on or off the ship and to, like, move about on the ship, and they're time-sensitive yep. so they can track where oh, you've good. been and when. Mm-hmm. Um, but that just adds to the mystery when someone just fucking vanishes in the middle of the ocean and they haven't used their key card to, like, get around. Or sure. somebody else can use their key card and then th- it throws the whole thing off. Exactly. Yep. Um, so a couple other things, like having a rape kit on board, which is always a good they thing. They never had that? Not until 2010. It wasn't mandated, and neither was, like, a, a doctor. Oh, my God. Which is which makes no sense, because they 
these ships usually have infirmaries and stuff. Like my friend Lainey, shout out to you. Her ailing grandmother wanted them to all go on a trip together before she died. Mm-hmm. And her grandmother died on the last day of the cruise oh, on the ship. Um, no. Yeah. Most cruise ships have a morgue that will hold yes. one to three people because so many yes. old people go on cruises. File oh that under shit I did not ever think about. Yep. Oh, my But that's precisely God. what happened. But she also, like, there was a doctor on board. Like, there's an infirmary. There's all this shit to prepare for her. Handicap rooms that are accessible. Like, obviously yeah. this was, you know, within the last 10 years. So these are more updated facilities. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I just assumed most ships, if not all ships, had that stuff. But I guess I think it wasn't, until recently like, mandated. they didn't have to. Yeah. Like, it wasn't on paper. Right. Um, some other so fun crazy. facts from Dr. Ross Klein. Men are more likely to go overboard than women. Hmm. Duh. Duh. Drunk idiots. The average <laughs> age of passengers who have gone overboard is 44. Oh. And okay. People, Don't go on a cruise in your 40s. People going overboard is most likely to happen on the last night of your cruise. And then this says probably during the endangered passengers drunken wanderings aboard the ship. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Last hurrah. Yeah. <laughs> Getting the mm-hmm. most out of your cruise before you die. Exactly. Yep. Um, so there was, there are two cases that I just wanted to touch on. So stop me if either of you are doing Daniel Belling. Nope. Nope. Or John Halford. Nope. Nope. Okay. So there's just this really sad, pathetic, like, my heart goes out to her quote from the wife of, I think his name, yeah, John Halford. Mm -hmm. Uh, He had, he was on a cruise by himself because, well, I'll just, I'll just read you this quote. It kind of sums it up. So this is from his widow, presumably. Okay. John had really been looking forward to the cruise. He was fascinated by ancient Egyptian culture and wanted to see the pyramids. He went Mm -hmm. alone because we couldn't afford to go as a family, plus the children had exams coming up. Ships are... Kind of weird, but okay. Ships... But sad. But really sad. So imagine this in a British accent, because I'm not about to even try that. (laughs) Do it. Again. Rose Dawson. (laughs) I do declare... (laughs) <laughs> that's southern. I know. That's, that <coughs> this flower joke. is a wilted. <laughs> okay, let me get through this. <laughs> okay, okay. Ships are places where it's easy to meet people, and John didn't mind going on his own. The passengers who saw him at the bar said he was not drunk and in good spirits. He'd packed his suitcase ready to go, but his other belongings, his passport, glasses, mobile phone, and rucksack, were found in his cabin, but there was no sign of John. He wasn't hmm. depressed. There was no sign at all that he was contemplating suicide. He just wasn't like that. His suitcase was later returned to us, and in it... Whoa, this is so sad. And in it were three necklaces for me, Lucy, and Sophie, oh. with our names written in hieroglyphics and a similar name bracelet. John was planning on coming home to us. Oh, oh my God. Isn't that oh. so sad? That is my so bird sad. Flew. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch, my bird flu. Ouch. <laughs> oh, my God. That really made me feel sad. I know. Like, yeah. you're, not even in a joking way. I feel bad. I know. You're welcome. That, <laughs> <laughs> so, I know. Oh, I'm over sucks. it. I'm over Isn't it now. Isn't great? There's, <laughs> there's also a case that's, like, ongoing that I just stumbled upon the other day. This happened, Fuck yes. like, last month. Okay. So there's this German guy who lives, lived in Dublin, named Daniel Belling. Okay. He had a Chinese wife named Xiang Lei Li, and, their two, mm-hmm. and they had two children. So they left Dublin to go to Italy for this Mediterranean cruise. Um, yep. This was like February. This was like seriously a few weeks ago. Oh, wow. um, they okay. were sailing through the Greek islands. Uh, they left on February 9th. She was not registered at ha- as having gotten off the boat at any time during the 10-day cruise. And a, wait- okay. and a waitress says that she hadn't seen her since the second day when the family was oh. eating at their assigned table in the restaurant. So I've never been yeah. on a cruise, but apparently you have assigned tables. And the staff should pro- like reasonably know 
who you are. Right, who you are. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so on day four of the cruise... Daniel told the cabin maid that she no longer needed to make up the the sofa as a bed since now there were only three people staying in the room and not four. What? Which is super fucking <laughs> suspicious. But like, why would you tell someone that? Right. Well, it's just, just let, let them let, do let, it. Yeah. So Idiot. he was arrested at the airport after the cruise, probably because... Because duh. Duh. Maybe someone alerted... I don't know. Someone figured out that he should probably be fucking detained and questioned. How, oh how, God. sorry, how old are the kids? Because the kids are there, and they're, aren't they, like, where's they're mommy? Young. They're young. Okay. They're, like, under, like, eight-ish. Oh, wow. They're, okay. they're young. Um, he was arrested at the airport, and when he was questioned, he first said that she got off the boat for, quote, urgent business reasons at an early stop in on one of the Greek islands, uh, but moments story. later when like asked follow up questions, he just refused to answer anything. He was just silent. Obviously. So she okay. had left her credit card, <coughs> her cell phone, and her wallet behind. So clearly it probably wasn't an urgent business reason because she left all her shit. Also, um, how fucking hard is it if you throw your wife overboard to also throw her wallet and cell phone overboard? Like yeah, how fucking like, dumb are you? We're gonna get to I that. Don't know. So he okay, never reported okay. her missing through the rest of the cruise. Um, because uh-huh. he claims that they have often had problems in their relationship and that they had taken a vacation prior to this where she just, like, got they got in a fight and she, like, left. She wandered off. Okay. So he thought that that was kind of the same thing. Like, maybe they had had a fight and she just left again. But that doesn't explain why she left her phone and her credit card and right. all her stuff. And mm-hmm. her children. And her children. Mm. Well, I get. He claims that the same thing had happened before, but there's no proof uh-huh. about that first time either. Right. So yeah. now, as of like two days ago, the cops found a photograph of the family boarding the boat or like right before they boarded the cruise ship. And the wife was carrying a suitcase that they couldn't find. The suitcase oh, is unaccounted for. So they think that Daniel murdered her, put her body in that very large suitcase and threw it over. Oh my god, creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, we're going to need follow up on that story. Meanwhile, the two mm. children are currently like in a state institution in Italy without either of their oh, parents. Sad. Oh man. Yeah, they suffer the most from all of this shit. Yeah. They don't have like relatives they can send them back to in the in the they're from the states. Where were they from? They were from Dublin. Germany. Germany. He, he, they're living in Dublin. The guy is German and she is Chinese. Oh. Mm. Okay, okay. Mm. Uh, so, anyway. That's fucking crazy. Stay That's updated crazy. on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Real hard. And the Fuck. last part of what I want to share with you, I came across some great cruise ship names in my research. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I've written down my... These are real names? Yes. Yeah, of the boats. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, Rhapsody of the Seas... Nice. Ooh, romantic. Bahamas celebration. Ooh. What are, um, this, I don't get that one. I don't know. This was, We're just celebrating the Bahamas? This is my favorite because <laughs> it's super Chinese and it is a Chinese vessel. It's called the Macau Success. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And then we I have, can just picture the cigarette smell on that ship <laughs> of a Macau it's Casino. Jumbo. Oh, man. Uh, the casino inside. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Uh, brilliance of the Seas and the Celebrity okay. Mercury. Ooh, I like Ooh, that one. Nice. It's like you're going to space. Yeah. <laughs> With, like, Joan Crawford or something. <laughs> my Mine on my story is pretty good, too. You guys ready for the it? The name? Yep. Yeah. And so that, ready. I, that uh, closes me out, so I can't wait to hear what you guys uh, came up with. Came up with. Love it. All right, well, I'll start with the name of the ship. It was, uh, my, my thing took place aboard the Sundance Cruises Star Dancer. Ooh. It's the Star Dancer? <laughs> yep. It, they just rode a stripper through the ocean for, like, seven days. <laughs> or, like, a celebrity's Barbie. child. <laughs> Blue Ivy. The SS Blue Ivy. <laughs> Which, fuck yes, sign me up. Yep. Part of by the Royal way. Caribbean Cruise Lines. I would ride The that. only cruise I'd ever really want to go on is the <laughs> Royal Caribbean Blue Ivy. <laughs> okay. So, 
my story is about Karen Waltz and uh, Dr. Scott Robin Rostin. Dr. Nandy? Dr. Dr. Nandy. <laughs> Aging Dr. Nandy. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta listen to last week to get the joke. <laughs> 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 okay, oh so God. on February 6th, 1988, Karen Waltz, who was 26, married chiropractor Dr. Scott Robin Rostin, who was 10 years her senior, in Whoa. a quickie Las Vegas ceremony. Yeah. Love it already. Yep. In the late 80s, that would have been yeah. a spectacle. I want to snag me a chiropractor. (laughs) Move over, Dan. I don't think you want this one for just a multitude of reasons. (laughs) One of which being his mustache. (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, God. There are photos on the blog. Um, Okay. Okay, so... After their quickie Vegas wedding, they immediately left Stop on a seven-day honeymoon quickie. cruise. <laughs> quickie. They had a quickie, which led to a quickie wedding, and they Woo. quickly left on a seven-day honeymoon <laughs> cruise to Mexico aboard the Star Dancer. The SS quickie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it gets classier. The couple met in Florida. She was a physical therapist. Scott mm-hmm. had had an injury. Uh, he had fallen down some stairs, and so Karen was treating his injury with a massage. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> As a chiropractor would. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> Something ironic about a chiropractor needing to see a physical therapist, but anyway. <laughs> um, <coughs> so, this is when things start to take a turn. Around 3 a.m. on the last day mm-hmm. of their week long honeymoon cruise, Oh, God. And also a day before Valentine's Day, Scott reported his wife overboard. He told the authorities on the ship that high winds blew his wife off the deck where they had been jogging. Having a quickie. I'm sorry. (laughs) Having a quickie. No. Jogging along a track (laughs) on the top deck. At three in the morning? Is he married to a kite? Is he married to a guy? It just took flight. It got a, <laughs> caught a gust of wind. I told you I'm to like, keep your arms down. Her. <laughs> Don't jog with your arms up holding a sail. At three yeah. in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Bon voyage. She flew away. She's a flying she bird squirrel. Flew. She's a star oh dancer. God. She has webbed toes and fingers. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> So, so yeah, so he told the authorities they'd been jogging. They're both fitness buffs, so Ugh, I hate on those. the surface, it <laughs> seemed maybe plausible, although three in the morning was a little odd. Yeah. Um, the U.S. Coast Guard immediately began a sea search for Karen, mm-hmm. um, and the police, meanwhile, were uh, investigating Scott's claims. Okay. They began to grow suspicious of his story for several reasons. Number one, it wasn't windy <laughs> at the time. <laughs> at all. <laughs> but her web <laughs> <Amazing. toes. laughs> At the time that Karen was supposed to have gone overboard, the wind velocity was no more than Five miles per hour. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, that's not going to do it. And that's probably just because the ship was moving. Yeah, yeah that, exactly. that's essentially zero, basically. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I can't okay. help it. Another <sighs> reason was that Karen was only uh, five foot three inches tall and the ship's railing was three foot six inches high so just like physically it would have been you can't just fall over yeah 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 exactly she would have had to have been hoisted up and over not yeah cruise ships may have very few regulations but like the height of the rails is at least one of them yeah you can't just trip over the side of a fucking cruise ship yeah but you or can get be blown thrown over by the wind. Easily thrown. Right. Yeah, she was a she was like a slight woman and like very athletic and did like ballet and stuff and was only five three, so she yeah, she wasn't like um 
hard to lift, I think. Right. So the police kind of immediately aren't buying Scott's version of the story. And so then Scott attempts to make some tweaks to his mm-hmm. tale. Um, he now says that he uh, hit his head, and we'll get more on the details of this in a little bit, but he says he hit his head and couldn't remember the full event. But the only thing he could remember was that he tried to save Karen as she was going overboard. So he reached out and tried to grab her, but he lost his grip and she fell. Okay. Yeah. Well... Okay, maybe I do have a little piece of psychology. Just talking about oh. this the other day. That's bullshit because when <laughs> yeah. when you're under stress like that and you're in a panic situation, your mind works like 10 times better. Like okay. you remember every fucking second of the crisis. Huh. Yep. So, he didn't forget but also tried to save her. That's not a yeah. thing. Yeah. Jeez. No, it's like a terrible It's not even a good lie. No. Here's some more suspicious shit about Scott, the chiropractor. Mm -hmm. So, Karen's mom had had suspicions about her future son-in-law, and she was pretty open about her suspicions uh, with Karen. Aren't all mother's-in-laws mother-in-laws? Suspicious. (laughs) Well, that's actually why they got married in Vegas without the family there oh. is because the oh. Karen's parents didn't like him mm. and were suspicious okay. of him. Classic. Um, so she was especially, uh, you know, curious about his finances. Um, and she, she said later that he seemed too well rehearsed whenever he like interacted with other people. It seemed like staged. Oh, like it was fake and Ooh. yeah, he is a psychopath. He yeah. practices saying hi to people in mirror. Yeah, Ex- yeah like that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> she said that she was so troubled by him and so suspicious of him that she actually had the engagement ring that he gave her daughter appraised because she knew that it wasn't real. Like, she just knew that the diamond that he had given her was fake. And what? Ew. Also, this yeah. mother-in-law is cray. I like I her. She, I like, I like her, her too, but yeah. really, yeah. I think cray. I think I would hope that Karen didn't find out about that because that would probably cause a rift. How'd she get to walk off with her ring to have it appraised if Karen didn't know? Yeah, for real. No, well, she probably just. I mean, I had my engagement ring appraised for to insure it. So she probably Fair just enough. was like, oh, you need to have this appraised to get insurance. And then her real motive was to prove that it was cubic zirconia. And and one report that I read said that it turned out to be a fake. And then I don't, but I don't know if that's true. I think. Amazing. Yeah. Let's assume it is. Yeah. Because we're not experts and we can't get in trouble for just wanting things <laughs> to go our way. Don't yeah, sue us. Go. Love it. <laughs> don't sue us. We, we have say no that money. every episode. <laughs> we much. beg our listeners not to sue us almost every episode, which is... Like... <laughs> I think it's fair. Okay. <laughs> We're covering our bases. <laughs> Hold on. There's, like, so much more to get through. Okay. okay. So, the police then interview Scott again, and uh, his face has, like, triangular gouges in it, which oh, are God. similar... To the pear-shaped engagement ring <gasps> that he had given Karen. Um, mm-hmm. And there was also a four-inch scratch across his face. Oh, shit. From trying to so, save her. It's not looking her, good. I'm sure. Yeah. Right. When all the birds attacked him to lift his wife off of the boat and fly <laughs> her away. <laughs> He, In the wind. He was married to a sheet of paper. He was bound yes. to get cuts. Mm. <laughs> um, okay, so, so they think that Karen probably fought for her life uh, as, you know, he tried to kill her and throw her overboard. Mm. Um, Scott tried to explain away the facial injuries by saying he had hit his head on the gangway control box. Right. However, so that's the head hitting. 
However, they went and looked at that control box, and there was no blood, no hair, no marks. No on triangular it. It spikes so no poking way. out of it. <laughs> yeah, there, there was no sign that anyone had hit themselves on it. And uh, the box also had no sharp edges, it was like rounded. It's so a it rubber t- ball. <laughs> It's a pillow. <laughs> uh, something's not adding up here. Oh my god! Okay, so this guy I, sucks at lying. Yeah, so he, far. yeah, he really, he really sucks at lying because now he changes his story. They come back and they tell him, "All right, you didn't hit your head on this box," <laughs> and he's right. like, "Oh, Obviously. right. Actually, these scratches are from quote souvenirs of a particularly energetic newlywed sex." <laughs> No. 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 Yeah. It Ew. wasn't. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you lie. I don't want to think about this guy getting his dick wet. Yeah. He's just making Ugh. his mother in law hate him even more. Salt and oh, Yeah. <laughs> don't talk about fucking her dead child. Okay. <laughs> so there's Thanks. more there's more suspicious shit from the night of. So, Mm -hmm. a passenger who shared a dinner table with a couple. So, I think on a lot of these cruises, I think you kind of have to share a table with, like, a couple other passengers because... Oh, yeah. They don't have tables for two. Yeah. 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 So, this passenger had shared the dinner table with them that same evening and stated that Scott had been angry with Karen because she was eating sweets, which is like... Oh, God. Okay, fine, you're a dick, but... Also, he was mad at her because she didn't know which utensil to use to cut her meat during the meal. And he was, well, really pissed off about that. That makes me mad, too. <laughs> yeah. Like, why are you eating your soup with a dessert spoon, you piece of human garbage? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw you off a fucking cruise ship first chance I get. She deserved. She deserved it's- it. You deserve far more if you <laughs> disgrace me in that way. Okay, so everybody, dare everybody has their triggers is what we're learning. <laughs> yeah. Some, Amanda's is some more trivial than improper others. Improper <laughs> utensil use is very important to me. <laughs> All right. Another passenger saw Scott quarreling with a woman on deck about 45 minutes to one hour before he reported his wife overboard. Mm -hmm. But the passenger was just like walking by so they couldn't really confirm if it was Karen or not. Um, And then yet another passenger who happened to also be uh, an assistant chief deputy in a sheriff's department, like in his day job, he was just on vacation. Hmm. Um, had gone for a stroll around the same area of the ship where Karen went overboard after she had gone overboard and noticed part of an earring and some hair, like, stuck on the side of the railing. Ew! Bloody hair. Oh, God. Yeah. I don't know if it was bloody hair. I kind of got to assume it. if 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 it's sticking to the railing on a cruise ship where there's, like, wind... Yeah, yeah, but it, there's also moisture. Yeah. So it could be sticking. I don't know. Either way, he found fucking enough hair to catch to catch his eye. Right. Yeah. Ugh. Stuck so, there. Ugh. So th- that man immediately <coughs> reported it to ship officials because he's not a fucking moron. Right. Okay, so after only a 10-hour search, the Coast Guard patrolling 30 miles southwest of San Diego noticed the tips of white sneakers in the water. <gasps> and no. Yeah. And it was Oh, Karen. that's such a creepy image. I yeah. know. White sneakers. Oh, that's giving me the fucking creeps. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's not great. I so, like it. <laughs> She she had been kept afloat by air trapped in her clothing. Ooh. So that's why she didn't sink. Well, oh, boobs God. are very buoyant also. Yes. Yes, but when I don't it, think they can... What? I, I, think, I think when it comes to, like, ocean water, I don't think boobs are going to keep you afloat. No, but fun fact, yeah. women normally float face up and men normally float, float face down. Yeah, get yes. some tits, boy, boy. Just, 
Just one of the perks of press. Mm hmm. Bra, bra. Oh my god. <laughs> so dumb. But look okay. at If only she had been wearing a wine bra. Yeah. Yeah. Tell well, you. She was already floating, so I don't know if it would have saved her, but... Yeah, she yeah. was probably already dead, but still. She would have been too drunk to use the wrong knife with her meat, maybe. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. What a dick. Um, Circling back to that. Dick. Oh, my God. I know. That's what I set him guy. off. And that she mm-hmm. was eating sweets when she, like, weighed 100 pounds to begin with. Let like, bitch have her sweets. Her yeah. sweets. It's, a, it's her <laughs> Bitch, I'm trying mood. to eat. <laughs> bitch, I'm trying to eat. My sweets. (laughs) Okay. So, because of the clothing, experts later testified that Karen could not have been conscious when she went overboard because had she been alive, she would have attempted to swim or at least would have struggled a bit in the water, which would have caused the air in her clothing to be released. So they think she must have gone overboard when she was already dead or unconscious. Okay, so like knocked out. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry, not dead, but must have must have been unconscious, but still alive because okay, water was found in her lungs, indicating that uh, she had died by drowning. Yep. Uh. But there had also a medical examiner also testified that there were signs of hemorrhage in her neck and eyes and warping of her neck bones, all evidence oh. of manual strangulation so she was oh my god she was there was a struggle she was strangled she was thrown so she overboard. passed out yeah while well, she was unconscious and then she i bet he thought she was dead but she wasn't and was trying to get rid of the body yeah Pro- probably yeah he was Whoa. at least trying to get rid of the body oh this yeah. guy sucks but yeah just like just wait oh, so no. Two days later, the star dancer sails back (laughs) to the port of Long Beach, and Scott is arrested. Um, Mm -hmm. He's held without bail while the investigation continues. More damning forensic evidence is uncovered. So they found uh, material from the rubberized jogging track embedded in Karen's clothing, which suggested that she had been aggressively pressed... Oh, to the lucky? deck. <laughs> She's dead. This is not lucky. <laughs> Nothing about this is lucky. I am joking, kind of. <laughs> okay. So she, so she had been pressed to the deck, so part of the, you know, the struggle, more evidence of a struggle. Um, more parts of her earrings were found on the deck and on the railing and more right. strands How of How shitty hair. were her earrings? Why are you jogging in earrings? Well, she wa- they weren't jogging. Is you know they were just up on the yeah, deck, and eh. he was murdering, and she was like desperately trying to get away. Yeah, yeah. She gets broken. All yeah. right. And the hair had been credit. had been pulled out from her head because it still had the root. So, oh. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Ouch. So yeah. appreciate all these details when I'm home alone, still with no blinds or porch lights. <laughs> yeah, real nice. You're not I, on a cruise, though, so you're safe. I was reading so much Ooh. creepy shit before we started recording, and then I just had to get up and lock my door. <laughs> like, yeah. I can't. I can't handle this. Um, oh, okay, yeah. So. Fun fact, the lock on my front door is also currently broken. So I have to lock Stop. it with a Lucy. screwdriver. Lucy! They don't know where they live. Oh my god. <coughs> It'll be fixed oh by the time this airs, God willing. Oh, oh no. Fucking Christ. I'm very worried about Lucy's safety, but let's yeah. just keep going. And then there were two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, this is the best part. This is the best part. So, he's already, <laughs> he's already, like, changed his story a bunch of times. Um, he clearly did it, you know, at, right. at, but at this point, the whole story, it sounds like a pretty classic, like fit of rage, lovers quarrel, crime of passion on the high seas. Exactly. Ooh. Exactly. The, the next lifetime original feature. <laughs> yep. But things are about to take a bizarre turn. Oh, Ooh. now. Cool. So I want you each to take a guess what his third version of events 
ends Ooh. up being at the trial. So at okay, first, well, he, first said he said she flew she away blown. like a kite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then he said he hit his head. He doesn't remember. He tried to save her. What does he say at trial in his defense? Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, they were running from a pack of angry Caribbean troubadours <laughs> and she fell and hit her head and the troubadours scooped her up and threw her overboard and gagged him and made him promise not to tell. You are way closer than you think. No. What? <laughs> How? <laughs> My guess was that it was... I was going to say clowns. His legit defense was it was Colonel Mustard in the library <laughs> with a candlestick. With a candlestick. <laughs> Okay, once in custody, Scott claimed that his wife Karen had been killed by Israeli secret agents. What the what? fuck, dude? He's no. a chiropractor. Just want to reiterate. Israeli troubadours. He should stick to yeah. chiropracting because <laughs> this is crazy. He knew too many government secrets about the status of the president's back. <laughs> The vertebrate. <laughs> His L4, L5 are weak. Yep. Um, oh, my God. Well, no, he's pretty no. spineless for a chiropractor, am I right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> nicely done. Thanks. I don't know what that was referring oh, wine, to, please. but... Okay. <laughs> okay, no. So he legit claimed that his wife had been murdered by Israeli secret agents in retaliation for his past publication of a book that was critical of the Israeli government. So he's a <laughs> political author also? Well, by day, he's a chiropractor. Of, by night, <laughs> he is like a literary facets. genius committed to un... <laughs> To, to exposing uh, Israeli <laughs> secret agents. <laughs> okay, so this is some background into his crazy fucking claim. Amazing. In, in, so remember, this whole thing is taking place in 1988. In 1978, Scott had emigrated to Israel with his parents and opened an unlicensed chiropractic clinic. Uh-huh. The next year, he spent more than two months in jail and in a mental hospital where he claimed to have been drugged and brutalized. Could not what? find out why he was in jail slash the mental hospital. Okay. No explanation. I love it. Scott also claims that the Israeli mafia targeted mm. him because he refused to marry a neighbor's niece. And even turned down bribes to marry her. What? Because he's the heartthrob in any version of his own story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> An unlicensed Absolutely. chiropractor. Yeah. What a the Israeli dick. mafia really wanted him to marry their niece. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so then in 1987, one year before he married Karen, Scott self published. Yes. Paid. He paid money to self-publish yes. his own Love book, it. which was a, quote, expose about Israeli government human rights violations entitled what? Nightmare in Israel. This uh, is like the most weirdly, like, not quite fascinating enough subject matter <laughs> ever. The moment you're self-publishing an expose, it's time yeah. to just stop what you're doing. Walk away. Walk bud. away. Yep. Yep. Right after the book was published, the sheriff's department of Palm Beach, so he had he left Israel and then wrote the book while living in Florida. Okay. Um, so he's living oh, in Oh, of Palm course Beach. he lives in Florida. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Fucking of course. <laughs> um, the sheriff's department in Palm Beach gets a report from Scott's parents. They claim that two Israelis in a white van had attempted to kidnap their son <laughs> outside a shopping mall. And, Scott, and this is all from Scott's perspective. There's no, there's no video cameras. There's no witnesses. It's all from Scott's testimony. He so said that the whole family is just like a bunch of crazy white people who are super racist against Israelis. Yeah, there's all, a lot of anti-Semitic undertones to this. Yeah, whole that's thing. all I'm hearing here. <laughs> well, I, I actually was wondering if it, if they're anti-Semitic or if they're if they're just 
if they're also Jewish and moved to Israel and then just turned out to be crazies, like this family. Yeah. Cause, cause Are they, they Jewish or Israel. crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Poor Zach. They can't be both. My fiance, <laughs> my fiance is Jewish. Don't get mad at us. Kenyon's kind of um, Jewish. Don't sue us. I'm like basically half Jewish. Um, uh, okay, so <laughs> Scott said that the two Israelis grabbed him and yelled in Hebrew, Israel wants you. Okay, sure they do, because you've been so kind to them over the years. <laughs> <laughs> They're just begging for your return. Your expose really set them on the right path. <laughs> well, there, there's more about the expose, just one sec. Oh, so no. he's able to break free, and then he... Happened to have a gun on him. And oh, yeah. So, so he sh- claims he shot one of his would-be captors, and then they sped away. They are in Florida. The hold-your-ground laws or whatever. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, that's true. Maybe. Pretty okay, sure you're allowed to shoot doesn't any matter religious because... minority in the state of Florida also. <laughs> Just with no reason, nothing. <laughs> Also, none of this happened, so there's that. <laughs> That's true. Like, there's no clue. There's, like, no way any stand, of this happened. Stand your Not delusion. Possible. Stand yeah. your delusion. <laughs> My God. <laughs> okay, so um, the part that makes his story the, you know, least believable is the fact that <laughs> it's... <laughs> wow. I can't even I get love this guy out, you guys. I'm so, so much. I'm so drunk I can't even get this <laughs> sentence out. <laughs> Holy you can okay. do it. I believe in you. <laughs> do it for the Jews. <laughs> oh, yes. We will do our soothing ocean sounds <laughs> to get you there. that Israel sent spies to get him since Mm -hmm. only one copy of his book had sold. No, (laughs) his mom bought it. His mom bought it. To his mom. Oh. That is so sad. Oh, ow, my bird flew. Ow. (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) One copy. You know oh, what? Man. I bet it was Karen's Lame. mom being like, I got to get this as yeah. evidence for whatever crime yeah. he's going to commit. Yeah, what I the fuck is this? I can't okay, believe so it. The defense made no effort to overcome the prosecution's forensic evidence or testimony <laughs> Not even, of fellow passengers. They knew. They the went into it knowing they had no chance. They were like, we're not even going to fucking try. This guy's an idiot. <laughs> the defense solely rested on this crazy Israeli spy story and <laughs> pointed out that there were two Israeli nationals on board the cruise ship at the time. <laughs> okay. And so then, in rebuttal, the prosecution surprised the defense by bringing to the stand Maurice Haziza, one of the two Israeli passengers. Oh, yes! Good. good. Yes! Who testified that he was <coughs> not a secret agent. <laughs> but, but he testified that. It's amazing. But in fact, oh a God. wedding photographer on vacation. Oh. <laughs> he and his <laughs> he and his friend had <laughs> had visited Disneyland and Universal Studios earlier Stop. on the trip. I'll prove it. Prove it. <laughs> show us. Show us your ticket stub. <laughs> show okay, us the so skin infection you not must have spies. gotten from. We're Epcot. literally on the most boring vacation of all time. Okay. No laws broken. I'm here. also picturing okay. Scott's lawyer lo- having that look on his face, just like <laughs> Lorena Bobbitt's oh, yes. husband's lawyer. It's like, what the fuck what is, is my life? How did to? I get here? Okay. What am I doing? Believe this is our best defense. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, as, oh, what? I was oh, attacked by that Israeli to? wedding photographer. <laughs> okay, so I swear it was an Epcot. <laughs> 
<laughs> Not surprisingly, the jury was unimpressed with the espionage defense. They found <laughs> Rostin guilty of second degree murder on the high seas. Oh my God! Yes. Was he was sentenced to life without parole, which was later reduced to 33 years, and then I think that was later reduced again for good behavior, which means that Scott Rostin will be out of prison and, <laughs> and quote, this is from an article, I can't take credit for this, facing down Israeli assassins. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Again in 2017. Woo-hoo! Oh my God! Whoa! Like, like now? Tomorrow. He will be released from federal prison on July 8th, 2017. Oh. Should we go? Oh. Should we go Should dressed we go? as Israeli go assassins? To what? <laughs> we just His shout prison. Like, Hebrew insults at him. <laughs> yes. Oh my God! No. I know that's super offensive, but like he deserves it. We Let's should stick it. To we him. should dress up as spy agents. Greet yeah. him yeah. at the prison door and be like, you've done good work, son. We're ready for you now. <laughs> yes. You've earned it your place. It was all a test. Seriously, this guy is like murderous Dwight from The Office, like so <laughs> deep in his delusion. I like him. Beats, bears, Israeli spy team. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. That's, that is my tale. I. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Mm-hmm. The, I I don't I have no words for that. So <laughs> so still there's the so he was convicted of her murder, but like yep, and they have her body, so she was for sure murdered, but there was no admission. Right. Yep, like it's yeah, still he never admitted it's it. Still still a lot of loose ends. I feel. Yeah. Well, he's fucking crazy. Well, yeah, he's fucking he's crazy, gonna, but like I don't know. You don't. Well, He's been in prison since 1989. Yeah. Oh, right. The 80s. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Don't forget. We should totally dress up as Israeli spies. That'd be (laughs) hilarious. I want to greet him. I want to be welcoming him with open arms. I can find out which federal prison he went to. Do it. Please do. Find his Facebook page. We have a road trip to plan. I was also thinking Ready your that, costumes, ladies. Does his g- being released early for good behavior, does that mean he, like, readjusted all of his, like, pr- prison guards? Like, he did some <laughs> chiropractic work and they were like... chiropractic They were like, we like you. We like you. I, I have chronic back pain. Uh, when you find a good chiropractor that you like, I would, yeah. I would let him... I would release him from prison, too. That's it, fair. They work miracles. Oh my hey, god! You gotta yeah. reward a good thing. Yeah. Cool. He's man's got it. skills. All right. Well Amanda, done. Thank you. Here we go. Take it away. <coughs> <coughs> Bird flu. Oh! Bird flu. Yeah! <laughs> so I am going to be discussing the famous case of Amy Bradley. I love this case. Yep. Is she related Ooh, to at- Vera? Oh my god. Okay. No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that one fell flat. Got it. <laughs> I'm drunk. Okay. I know. <laughs> okay. I'm actually feeling okay ish. Mm. Um anyway, <laughs> Amy Bradley, who at 23 years old in 1998 disappeared off of the Royal Caribbean International Cruise Ship Rhapsody of the Seas. Woo! So one of your aforementioned ships. Yeah. Um, while it was on a trip from Puerto Rico to the island of Caraco. Mm. Curacao? Curacao. I don't know how to pronounce it. Curacao? Curacao. Cool. Yeah. Like the yeah. blue shit you get in your fruity drinks. Oh, yeah. It's ew, the only yeah, blue okay. liquor besides like hypnotic. It's disgusting. Yeah. Yep. Which is located in the Southern Caribbean Sea. And um, she had just graduated college. So she was on the cruise, like, as a treat to celebrate her graduation with her family, consisting of her mom and dad and her brother. So it was the four of them on this cruise. And she's, like, 20? Mm. She's 23. 23. 23. She graduated okay. college. Yeah, gotcha. She was, like, young and pretty and healthy. Yeah, and she's Full of life cute. and ambition. Oh. And yeah. ready to live. Dewy um, skin. Yeah. Right. What's Probably. funny is she, apparently she didn't really want to go because the open ocean freaked her out, as it fucking should. Yeah. But her family was like, 
girl, we're going on a cruise. Quit whining. We're going to just do it. She was like, fine. And she embraced it and went for it. And she's no, like, but you guys, gut. the average cruise ship dumps 200,000 no. gallons of feces <laughs> into the water every day. A day. Oh, my God. Which is true. I don't want to be part of that. That's I actually horrific. just wanted to uh, wind that into our story, weave it in casually. You did that very naturally. It felt very organic. It's true. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Thank you. So on March 23rd, 1998, it's the third night of the trip, and the ship is docked in Curacao, right? Mm -hmm. Curacao. Yeah. 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 She and her family attend a dinner party on the upper deck, which I love anything revolving around an upper decker, you know what I mean, guys? (laughs) Speaking of poop. Everything comes back to poop. Let's be honest. I know, right? So she stays out with her brother partying after hours after this party. Not a girl. And didn't return until the family cabin until 3.40 a.m. Woof. And they know this because of the key card thing. Probably not because it was 1998. Yep, never mind. Nope. (laughs) Yeah. So <laughs> they know this because this is like testimony from her brother and her family probably noticed them return to the cabin. The cabins aren't big, so mm-hmm. that'd be my guess. And her dad um, checked F- his pocket watch and said, young lady, it's so late. It's 340 mm-hmm. and 30 seconds. Why is it a pocket watch? It's 1998. Because it's probably like a calculator it's watch. 1998. <laughs> it's, a, it's a totally a calculator watch. It's, it's a swatch. He checked his calculator watch, did some quick math. <laughs> Got out his boots. compass. Anyway. Hey, it's dark. Okay. At 5.30 a.m., Amy wakes up, changes clothes, and steps outside with her cigs and a lighter onto the little, like, balcony. Mm. Um, obviously planning to return shortly because she didn't put on shoes or anything. Mm. Um, or but, did she just not care so much because she was going to throw herself over the edge? Well, uh, we don't know. Her family would never see her again. Oh. That's it. She vanishes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, so funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh my har, har. god. It yeah, was you're just evil. so abrupt. Sorry. I know. But disappearances Sorry. usually are okay. pretty abrupt. <laughs> so when Amy fails to return to her cabin, her understandably worried family urges the ship to page her over like the ship's intercom. But they refuse on the grounds that it was too early in the morning to use the loudspeaker. Mm. I appreciate that. No! (laughs) I kind of do too, though. Oh my god, you guys are awful. (laughs) I mean, imagine if you went for a cruise and then they started announcing shit on the loudspeaker at 4 a.m. And all she was doing was like. If someone vanished, I'd be like, okay. She was just smoking weed with like the bar back that she met earlier in the night. It's like, oh my god, dad, seriously. Funny you should say that. (laughs) Things sort of go in that direction. Excellent. The crew also refuses the family's plea to back the ship away from the dock or secure, like, any of the exits or entrances to prevent any potential kidnapper from whisking her away because the ship was docked at this point. Oh, Um, that's And it wasn't until about 8 in the morning that a page was finally carried out, and by that time, most of the passengers had already disembarked for the day to go do, like, the day's activities. I'd still be asleep, and I'd still be pissed that they used the Same loudspeaker. Same but... <laughs> so, out of the gate, Royal Caribbean is handling this, like, shit. Like, they do not give a fuck. They just don't want to deviate from the normal day's activities. Yeah. Finally, the captain orders a thorough search of the ship, scouring all ten decks and 999 rooms of the massive ship in search of her. Holy and there's crap. N- yeah, it was a big old ship. Um, they searched there's every no sign single passenger's room? So they claim. No, they d- fucking mm. didn't. That's what yeah. I'm saying. There's nothing in their um, ticket contract that says they have to search. Exactly. So they're looking for her, they're looking for her, they don't find any sign of her. It looks like she's just vanished into thin air. And even then, the captain of the cruise would not post any pictures of Amy or inform the ship's passengers of her disappearance because he felt like the news would upset the other guests. Mm. So he straight up was like, no, I don't want to ruin other people's vacation. Sorry, your kid's gone. What iceberg? Exactly. (laughs) So we have some we have some theories and weird shit here. um, And things do consistently get weird. The following day when the FBI. So the FBI is alerted um, within 24 hours of this disappearance. And they inform the family that the crew's security 
had in fact only done a cursory search mm. of the common areas and restrooms. So they Ugh. had not done a thorough search of any of the rooms, even though they said they did. Mm -hmm. she, so she could be in any one of a thousand rooms. A thousand rooms that they didn't even fucking or look into. Or not on the ship. She could have or gotten not whisked right. away by now. Yeah, we have no right. clue. Right. The concerned family uh, returns to the ship and was met with who was described as the ship's risk management agent. Hmm. But this person actually turned out to be the cruise line's attorney representing the company in any legal action taken by Amy's family against them. So he so lied. So he was their enemy, and they yeah. thought that he was going to help them. Exactly. Um, the FBI stepped in and engaged in several interviews with this attorney, during which the family was not allowed to be present. Mm. Yet the attorney was allowed to attend and did attend all of the family's meetings with the FBI. Fuck. So this attorney w had access to, like, every single bit of information while at the same time cut off the family from fucking everything. Yep. This so, is how fucking terrible these cruise ships are. Yet again, fucked. they're horrifying. Don't ever pay money to go on a cruise. Ever. Right. Ever. Ever. The Unless secrecy. a cruise company wants to sponsor wine and crime. We're open to which case, sponsorships. Yeah. <laughs> we will gladly attend. <laughs> but anyway, secrecy, lack chill. of cooperation. We can't product. argue all inclusive. We just can't. No. <laughs> it would be stupid of us to. <laughs> Let's get back on track here because okay. there's a lot more to go. Okay. The secrecy, lack of cooperation, dishonesty, and even hostility shown by the cruise line was extremely discouraging to Amy's family because obviously. Right. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Um, <coughs> as the investigation continues, several witnesses come forward and some light was shed upon the events of the evening. She was smoking weed with a bar back, wasn't she? No, uh -oh. but okay. <laughs> she was doing some other shit. Ooh. So one witness in particular by the name of Crystal Roberts claimed to have seen Amy shortly after she left her cabin with a bass player. Always the bass which, player. Always the bass player. Yeah. It concerns me because Dan is a bass player. Uh, so we're officially <laughs> never going on a cruise. If I go missing, it was Dan. Two of the three of us are in very committed relationships to a bass player. With a bass player. So... <laughs> The bass player's name was Alistair Douglas, but he was <laughs> known as Yellow. <laughs> yeah. So, bass player Alistair Douglas, he goes by Yellow. He's in a band called The Blue Orchid. And they had been but playing at Yellow. the party that the family was at on the ship. So, it was like cruise entertainment. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Um, and they'd be playing the party the night before, and other witnesses saw him, like, flirting with her at the party and her responding positively to that flirtation and them hanging out. And video footage from the party shows them slow dancing with each other and appearing to hold hands. Ooh, so they're clearly hitting hi. it off when they hang out. I like it. Um, there are a few strange things about this encounter with Yellow that happened on the morning of Amy's disappearance that seem highly suspicious. Mm. Um, it was claimed that after meeting up with him in the early morning hours, Amy was seen going off with him to another area of the ship, but that he returns 10 minutes later alone. Mm. Then Amy's brother, Brad, said that Yellow had come to their room the morning of the initial search and said he felt bad about his sister and, like, what happened to her. So he even knew though, right away. But even though the family and security were the only ones who knew of the disappearance at the time. So he shouldn't have known anything. What? But did. Fuck. Nevertheless, what authorities was, could not. What was what? Yellow's story? Like they just hung <laughs> out and yeah. went home? He had no story. They hung out and then she went back to her room and he hadn't seen her since. What the mm. fuck? I, it was weird. Um, authorities couldn't find any evidence to link him to her disappearance and he wasn't detained or considered a suspect at all. What? What a relief yeah. to yellow. I know. <laughs> also, you said her brother, Amy Bradley's brother's name was Brad. Did she Brad really have Bradley. A <laughs> Brad Bradley. No. That's a it's crime real. in itself. Arrest the parents. 
Jesus. The true crime was the naming of the brother Brad. Brad Bradley. So there are some other spooky little details that happened um, that, like, surfaced after all this. So it was later claimed by the family that at the party on March 23rd, the night before Amy disappears, they had seen a group of individuals who were not passengers come aboard the ship with a dance troupe, which is what inspired my guess earlier, <laughs> um, and proceed to mill about and sort of observe the party while standing near the ship's railing. Mm. And the family had felt at the time that it was rather odd that these strangers should just be allowed to, like, freely board the ship and watch a performance along with the passengers. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it but, seems real safe. Yeah. Um, but this seems like kind of a reach to me that a group of mysterious dance, like, troubadours could <laughs> get on the ship. But this doesn't include a yellow, right? Yellow is a, doesn't like a include yellow. ship employee? These are, no, they, they, the family claims they saw, like, some randos just get on the ship, watch the band, sort of, like, see what was, what the haps were at this party, and then leave. Yeah. Okay. But I could I could see conceivably some locals being able mm -hmm. to like bribe people to like get on the ship and party or like knowing some of the staff, especially sure. if the yeah. same the same ship comes into that same port, you know, fairly regularly. Right. And I you could, know, I don't the kind staff. of see that. Yeah. I don't think it's that crazy. I would totally yeah. I just, do that. That sounds it just fun. Sell, it just it seemed like a grasp at straws, but if who there knows? are any cruise yeah. ships in the Midwest right now, let me know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because anyone on I'll totally the QE2 of Lake Minnetonka. Oh my god, the QE2. Yes. <laughs> um, it was also suggested at the time that she may have run away or even committed suicide by jumping over the ship's railing. But this really didn't make a lot of sense because she was a happy, well-adjusted young lady who, by all accounts, like, loved her family. And she had yeah. just um, graduated. She just uh, adopted a puppy. Also, good, she planned, good luck running away on a cruise ship. Well, they go, they dock they all the time. And there oh, are a okay. bunch of activities to do. I thought you meant, like, running away on. No, you're just ship. a drunk idiot right I now. know. <laughs> it's Saturday. <coughs> Cheers. Um, so yeah, she had adopted a puppy. She was planning to pick it up after the cruise. She had just gotten like a job offer that she was going to start when she got back. So there was no reason for her to run off or kill herself. It makes no sense. Um, it was also suggested that she could have gotten caught up in some sort of illegal activity or had maybe witnessed a crime and was silenced. Like these are all these theories that have been yeah, people uh, just go in floated insane. around. Yes. Yeah. Um, but Amy was a law-abiding citizen with a clean criminal record. Again, there's no reason to believe that if she had seen a crime, she wouldn't have said anything or that she would have gotten herself into an illegal situation. Yeah. Um, murder is definitely a possibility and would usually assume that this is the most likely situation because I'm just suspicious of all men and yellow is a fucking weirdo. But yeah. there's so much more weird shit going on here, and there's no evidence of foul play. No suspect, no clear motive, um, no reason why anyone would want to kill this, like, friendly, cheerful, vacationing young lady randomly. I just, I just don't understand why Yellow was not considered a suspect. Uh, because it wasn't, it wasn't, like, an investigation carried out by police it, it's, right. I mean it's another yeah. shoddy like as yeah. we've addressed exactly there is no I, entity responsible for doing the investigation like if, if anything it relies on the cruise ship line which mm -hmm. as we've discussed they rely on their reputation and their revenue so why yeah. would yeah. they and when it, the FBI yeah. do get involved they're not really putting forth like an extraordinary amount of resources because they also know that nobody gives a shit in the grand scheme of things. And what also that here. the cruise line is pretty unlikely to hand over any proof that they do have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that said, the cruise ship company itself, Royal Caribbean International, officially stated that Amy had merely accidentally fallen over a railing and drowned, perhaps while drunk after the party. Mm. Um, but not only is there no evidence of this at all, the sea conditions at the time were relatively calm, so it doesn't really make sense that she wouldn't be found if she had gone overboard. 
Amy was a lifeguard and a super proficient swimmer. Mm. So, like, she would have at least tried, which buys at least some time for her to be discovered if she had gone overboard. Yeah. Um, the ship was docked super close to land at the time of her disappearance, so she probably could have swam to land if she couldn't have gotten back on the boat. And that makes it yeah. even more unlikely that she would drown. I mean, how far possibly could you, if a cruise ship is docked at a port, mm -hmm. like, I would think yeah. a mile at the absolute most. There's an even, to absolutely land. not even a mile to yeah, land. Yeah, not even. Or to yeah. a dock, no, like, like even a 100 mi yards a maybe. A mile, and this goes for, well, I guess the other, Kenyon's case didn't <laughs> happen when they were docked, but. Yep. Like a mile, like a mile is a long way to swim, and it depends on the tide. But like, yeah, there's like a quarter of a mile, maybe. Right, and like we talked about before, the railings on these ships are designed so that thousands of passengers on board can't just go stumbling over them to their death. Right. Yeah. So they're at least three and a half feet high and hard to like accidentally fall over, even when you're drunk. Right. It's yeah. just not a thing that makes sense. So. I think the most likely theory is that she was abducted, and mm. here's why I think that. Um, adding to the mystery of this case are various, like, unsettling alleged sightings of Amy Ooh. that have popped up since she disappeared. Ew. <coughs> so, in 1998, the year she disappeared, two Canadian tourists claimed to have seen Amy walking along a beach in Curacao, flanked by two men. And when the missing woman heard them, these Canadians speaking English, she allegedly tried to approach them, after which mm. the two men that were with her grab her and guide her into a nearby cafe. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. So, so like, they're, like, so whisking like her away. So, like, a trafficking situation? Exactly. That's exactly what, like, I think the most sound theory is. That is, um, yeah. It, really, it truly is. Especially because a lot of these ships are are docking in ports that are, you right. know, you and know, apparently, and but countries we're like going to get to it, but there's a lot of, there have been a lot of issues in this area with sex trafficking, apparently. Mm. Um, mm. The couple, the Canadian couple was able to describe very distinctive tattoos that Amy was known to have, including, and this part just made me sad, she had Tear a tattoo on her face. Oh. No, a Tasmanian devil spinning a basketball on her shoulder. No, girl, yes. why? I no. know. Um, a, a, a tramp stamp of a sun on her lower back. Please stop. Oh. And a gecko <laughs> on her navel. Oh. Just the three oh. worst tattoos in the world Those to like be identified by. Those are the biggest crimes that we've discussed this entire I episode. I know. It makes me so sad. <laughs> Um, mm, I know. Amy was allegedly cited again in 2005 at a department store in Bridgetown, Barbados, under equally disturbing circumstances. On this occasion, eyewitness Judy Maurer reported that she had been in a restroom stall when she overheard some men come into the women's room and apparently threaten a young woman in another stall, shouting, quote, a deal is coming through. You need to obey to not mess it up. Oh, Before, my God. Yeah. So after a few minutes, Maurer cautiously exits the stall and finds a very distraught and panicked-looking woman in her 30s, so it fits, like, the age progression, yeah. punched over the restroom sink, who told her that she was from Virginia and that her name was Amy, which are details <gasps> that coincide with Amy's yeah. life. Um, moments later, the men return and practically drag her out violently out of the restroom. Um, this woman, Judy, is terrified, doesn't know what to do, so she flees the scene and reports the experience to authorities and later provides FBI with a description of the two men, which was made into a sketch and circulated to no avail. But, like, yeah, what could <coughs> they do? You're in a foreign country. Like, yeah. you don't have available resource, like, victim right. uh, resources. And a lot of these places, like Barbados, the Caribbean, there are a lot of issues with sex, sex trafficking because there's so much tourism there. Yeah. But there's, like, a lot of corruption and just, yeah. like lack of government in the native areas. Yeah. And these people can make so much money off of tourists by basically, like, operating brothels and things like that. Yeah. And drugs. The, the, the it's only thing super I will sad. Say, the only thing I will say, and, and it's not to disprove this theory, mm. but it's just that the whole, like, 
based on the movie Taken, idea right. of sex trafficking is like so rare as to be, right. you know, just Hollywood fake. So, you so, know, the the vast, vast, vast majority of sex trafficking victims are like people born in poverty totally. with no options. You know, it's not it's not upper middle class white mm-hmm. girls on cruises with their families because people are they want to take people that no one's looking for. Yeah, they, it's just exactly. so much easier. There are enough vulnerable people out there to prey on that they sure. don't need to take that kind of risk. But would it be fair to say that people, well, women, let's be honest, um, like Natalie Holloway or like this woman, because they're born from like white mm-hmm. affluent American mm-hmm. families, would they fetch a higher price? Oh, for sure, but it's just, it's It's just rare. It's not very, common, is what you're very, saying. Very, very, very rare. Yeah. yeah. Which is not to say that that isn't what happened. I mean, again, it's exactly. just a theory that, uh, yeah. and there's, again, there's more. So the, all this stuff that I read into is kind of what makes me think, like, I wonder if this is what happened. Yeah. Um, there's more evidence that comes in the form of online photos that were found in 2004 and 2005 on a prostitution website. Of a mostly naked woman in sexually suggestive poses who highly resembled Amy and seemed to suggest that she'd been sold into some sort of sexual slavery. Um, Another witness report from 1999 apparently, like, further supported this possibility by claiming to have cited the missing girl um, at a brothel in Curacao. So I actually have on the drive pictures of Amy and that picture of... uh, the picture that was circulating that looks like Amy and yeah. like it really does look like Amy, like a slightly older, like gussied up. I mean like painted on it's, it's pretty creepy. Well, but, the, uh, the simple fact that no authority can go down there and, and save this woman right. is the most atrocious part of this entire exactly. episode. Like there's so many conflicting gu- you know, national government rules or whatever. Mm -hmm. We can't do anything about it. We could know for a fact that she was down there in Curacao being sold as a sex slave and we couldn't do anything about it. Right. And that brings us to this next portion where they're talking about how um, this is like a super dark possibility, but it's not super far-fetched because the Caribbean has become rather notorious for human trafficking. Yeah. Um, And Mm -hmm. it there's this uh, super sad statement from um, this gentleman, Steve Reeves, the editor of a cruise line trade publication that said, quote, there's rumor and legend surrounding slavery in the Southern Caribbean. It's not uncommon knowledge in the maritime community that young white women are considered to be very desirable to foreign procurers. So somebody yeah. may have taken the risk of, of kidnapping her. Like Kenyon said, it's not common, but right. if someone's ballsy enough to do it, it this could happen. Yeah. And times, if, if the opportunity arose. Yeah. Exactly. If she's drunk, it's three in the morning. You know, shit, maybe she did fall off the ship. Maybe she did make it to shore to be greeted by, mm-hmm. like, not very helpful people. And none Could of those things are reported. Things. And then tying nope. back to the fact, like, that we don't really know how well vetted the actual employees of these cruise ships right. are. Right. And maybe they, they someone are there from was in all on of it. these countries. Like, they're from everywhere. Sure. And we yeah. don't, we don't, you know... N- we don't know if not the, like, that you the should ever be like could afraid have, of could her. Have yeah. bound and gagged her and just like peaced out from his job, but also left with a person. It's yeah. certainly it's possible. So despite intensive investigation, I mean at least as intensive as cruise ship disappearance investigation can Which get, is with the minimal. FBI, heavy publicity in the media, including the shows America's Most Wanted, Vanished, and Doctor Phil, but not Doctor Nandy. So mm. I God damn it, yeah. Doctor Nandy. Where's Nandy? Well, we want Nandy. Um, (laughs) As well as numerous news outlets and magazines. I mean, this was fucking everywhere in the late 90s. They were offering a $250,000 reward just for information leading to her safe return. And then a $50,000 reward for information um, pinpointing even just a verifiable location that she might be in. Mm -hmm. So, like, people were really trying to make her to get her home. Um, but the case of the disappearance of Amy Lynn Bradley still remains unsolved and there's shockingly little evidence, very few leads, like jack shit. Yeah. Well, I think as far as evidence goes, there's actually a 
sounds like there's cut quite a bit of evidence, but there's nothing. But it's we all can circumstantial. Do about it. No, it's but all witnessed, like unverifiable too. Right. Yeah, I witnessed sightings. I mean, especially years after the fact. Yeah. By by people who didn't know her in the first place. By people exactly. Who just saw her picture. Like doesn't count it, as evidence. No. Not really. Yeah. Yeah. It's all circumstantial evidence. She, she I also could have, she could have died that night. You know, like we yep. don't know. And just. Yeah, she went overboard, say, 3, 4 in the morning. No one's really around to pay attention. Yeah. And she just floated off, and they didn't, you know. But the boat was docked is the thing that makes it, yeah. like, I keep forgetting that. Like, That's they the weren't most, out yeah. to sea. They were in a port. That's the most yeah. compelling piece of this, I feel. It is. It is a really compelling piece of it. Like, there's yeah. why, if you're in a port, how could you not find a body? Mm -hmm. Like, where's her fucking body? She was yeah. taken. I mean... I mean, there are still tides in the port, but sure. you would think it's just so much yeah. less likely, right? But not, if they were yeah. able to find, if they were able to find Karen while yeah. the ship was still sailing, then oh, how could they not find? Hours. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's cray. I also added to the um, to the drive the police sketch of the people that like the Canadian couple thought. No, yeah. Please saw, tell me it was the better the than the poopers. Dude, the uh, why are police, the ceiling. Why are really. police sketches always so bad? So bad. Like look these at look sketches. like insane cartoons. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Seeing the guy with the mullet with like the Elvis mullet. Dude, I Pull can't that. tell where like his pencil thin mustache begins and his lip I, I don't think that's. It. I think that's an attempt at <laughs> shading. I don't think no. that that's. That's not a that mustache. No, I think that's I'm an zooming in at on shading. it. My God, I it's am trying bad. to find our folder. So hold please on. hold on to any photos of me so that no one ever has to do a police sketch of my face because it's not going to be. Good. <laughs> it just makes me the thought of it makes me really sad. I love. I love like the attempt at at showing the eyes behind yeah. the sunglasses. I know. Yeah. Wait, I also I'm love the guy with like it. the tiny sunglasses, the like half moon <laughs> sunglasses <laughs> on like the tip of his nose. And why is there so much space between his nose and his top lip on that guy? <laughs> There's like a mile of empty space between the tip of his nose yeah. and the top lip. I cannot oh, draw at all, there. and I could. I feel like I could do better than these. Yeah, same. I feel it's... like I may have drawn these. <laughs> like these look like something I would draw and be like roll proud of for how yeah. good they were. <laughs> all right. Okay. Are we? <coughs> are we ready for special thanks this week? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one thing I want to shout out before we okay. give all of our special thanks. Got to give a shout out to Kelly and Naj of the Pantsless Beer Review. Oh, yeah. Who ditched their beer for a an episode of their YouTube show and instead listened to an episode of Wine and Crime and drank an entire box of wine between yeah. the two of them and recorded themselves doing it. So if you want to watch interactive drunkenness from two really fucking funny gals who know a shit ton about beer, check out pantsless beer review it is online on youtube they have a facebook page they're fucking awesome look it up look okay so first we have kylie foss who is a fellow minneapolis lady shout out uh then we have aaron sylvester who uh, is also a minnesota chick i think she is friends with amanda um Okay, so then we have Joseph Kerouac, uh, a.k.a. Mortal Garbage. And then we have Allie Berninger, Berninger, I don't know how to say your last name, but thank you. Uh, and we have Corey Lynn Edwards, thank you so much. And then in a whole new category, we have uh, some $10 a month Patreon supporters, which means that these two lovely ladies will be getting some surprise merchandise in the mail uh, from the Wine and Crime gals once we, you know, have merch. Uh, so those two ladies are Erica Hile, Heil, I don't know how to say your name, and Hilary Holt. So thank you both so much. 
And last but not least, because March is Tripod Month, uh, we have a podcast recommendation for you guys. And that podcast is called And That's Why We Drink. Um, This podcast, if you like us, you're going to like them. It is a combination of paranormal stories and true crime stories by two funny feminist ladies uh Woo! so definitely check them I out we love you we'll see you next week thank you so much bye <laughs> love you <laughs> thanks for listening to wine and crime our cover art is by Kali yip music by phil young and Corey wendell sound mixing by dan larson check out our website and blog at wineandcrimepodcast.com you can also follow us on facebook twitter and instagram at wine and crime pod if you have wine recommendations or creepy true crime stories to share, email us at wineandcrimepodcast at gmail.com. All Wine and Crime episodes are available on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play, plus a number of other podcasting apps. If we're not on your preferred app yet, let us know and we'll work to make sure you get your Wine and Crime fix ASAP. Most importantly, if you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. It really is the best way to spread the word. Support for Wine and Crime comes from us. At the moment, we're footing most of the bill, but we ain't too proud to beg, so we're also on Patreon. If you'd like to support us and get a shout-out on air, visit our Patreon page to keep this podcast and the wine flowing. (laughs) 